a real handbrake. A real handbrake, look at that. All wheel drive and a real handbrake. They call me Mr. Spark, they put me in the dark, then I light it up and I go pop pop. Hello and welcome to the Dadmobile. Dadmobile? So, we are no strangers to the Mark 7, Mark 6, GTI, Golf R, really the MQB platform. And this just may be the ultimate MQB. At least one that we got in North America. So, what, what, what is this, right? First of all, it's an all track. Now, all track, all track, everyone wants to go off road. And Volkswagen decided that they kind of want to make a thing that looks like it can go off road. Don't be fooled, this is not a true off road car. This is still very much an MQB, but it offers some really interesting features uh, and setup that you can't really find in all of the other ones. So it takes some, some GTI, some Golf R parts and mushes them together for 1.8 T. Now, why we're interested in this? It's because, well, guess what? This is an enthusiast car. People time attack them, uh, people take them camping, people, you know, have a blast down the, down the highway, people enjoy them. And because now we are able to tune these, thanks to our friends at Cobb, we're now interested in making these a more enjoyable, more enthusiastic, faster platform. So where do we start? First of all, let's talk about what you're looking at here and which kind of wagon or 1.8 liter TSI you should be interested in. So first, we're gonna pop the hood. If you're a Mark 7 person, you'll see that uh, this looks exactly what you, like you'd find in a Golf R or in a GTI. So the difference is that this is a 1.8 liter motor and what they've changed about this is they've actually reduced the stroke uh, and not the bore. There's a lot of similarities about this engine and the one find, uh, found in the GTI and the Golf R. It's got a smaller IS12 turbo than, than those cars. It's very much upgradable with the IS20 from the GTA, the IS38 from the Golf R, and any sort of other turbo in the aftermarket. But keep in mind that being a little bit less displacement, it'll spool the turbos a tiny bit slower. I know IS20 and IS38 swaps are super common. Other really nice things that, that you get here, just like any other sort of uh, you know MQB, uh, you've got your or rather EA888.3. You've got your manifold that has the pre-molds for port injection. So all the port injection kits, MPI kits that fit on the two liter will fit and be tunable on this car. Uh, of course, you've got the turbochargers, our direct swap. Uh, you've got intakes that go on, you've got exhaust components that go on. This one being a slightly longer car, you know, your cat back is a little bit different. But there's just so many similarities uh, between these cars that they may it makes them really really appealing to to just get into and uh, Don't remove this cover because you may never get it back on but really get into and and enjoy What is a really stout? mod friendly platform now the 1.8 TSI showed up in regular golfs which had either manual transmission or just a torque converter automatic and it showed up in these wagons now this is an all track but it's also known as sport wagon which is not lifted and the wagons actually came in front wheel drive or all wheel drive 
all track or the four motion system rather is the all wheel drive and specifically the all track shares the suspension components and larger brakes from the GTI and Golf R. The knuckles are the same as, as those cars and that means that you can swap components, you can swap brakes. These are the non-performance pack GTI brakes that already come on the car. So it already gives you a lot of aftermarket support. This is a 2019 model. You can recognize that by the headlights. It received a facelift and this, while well, I'm still fiddling with this, this cover, um, and, and this is also a DSG car. So the sport wagons and all tracks, uh, the four motions came with a DSG. It is a six speed DSG. So they didn't get the seven speed DSG uh, in North America that the 7.5s got. So basically what you're looking at is a 1.8 liter extended wheelbase Golf R. And one of our goals, of course, with this platform and this car is to make it perform like a Golf R. So now, why not buy a Golf R? Yes, the all track is a little bit heavier. The all track is a little bit more of a dad looking package, or if you're European, you might enjoy that. But what you might also really enjoy is what happens in the back. This thing is long. You can put your track tires in there. You can put your baby seats in the back. You could be living the life of the undercover dad. So it's got an outlet here. It's, a, it's an inverter, so it's got 120 volt AC already built in. It's got a little release for the seats. Should you find yourself in the woods, you know, want a little privacy and extend those. So a lot of nice features uh, in all honesty, and it's a bigger car. And in Europe, they had this thing as a Golf R. So let's step inside the car and I'll show you a couple of similarities and differences uh, between an R uh, slash GTI and this car. And after that, what we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is of course tune the car. Get it on the dyno, see what this 180 horsepower rated engine actually makes on the dyno of this turbocharger. Tune it, tune the DSG, and then just continue the build path. Inside the old track, you can kind of get a sense of what makes this an enthusiast or a performance oriented car. So this is their, you know, whatever their high line uh, package. And uh, like I said, all the all tracks and all the four motion sport wagons come with the DSG. It looks and feels very much like a GTI or a Golf R with the exception that the the programming is different and the gearing is different. And of course, we're gonna have our own DSG tunes for these cars. So that should address any sort of shortcoming there. But but it's it's definitely got the right transmission. And it's only a six speed in this car, but that's fine. It's also got the, the modes that we're all very familiar with in, in the other cars. So you get your sport, normal, eco, and there's, a, there's an off-road mode, which is, which is kind of neat. The information display here uh, will have uh, the oil temperatures also an altitude meter the one thing that it's missing is the button to turn off your stability control so you kind of have to go through this uh, this menu here and you can see that stock it'll only do ESC Sport as the most advanced and uh, ESC Sport uh, doesn't fully turn off stability control now I do plan on taking this car ice racing so we're gonna do some uh, VCDS reprogramming you can do this with OBD 11 to just be able to turn off the stability control control uh, entirely. Um, otherwise, you get the paddle shifters just like you do in a GTI and a Golf R. They're just as responsive on a, on a DSG transmission uh, as they are in this car. Uh, the gauge cluster is very similar. The pedal placement is similar. Like If you don't look behind you, you don't see all the extra space or above you on this massive, massive roof that apparently leaks, um, then then you basically are looking at sitting in a, in a Golf R or a GTI. Um, so that that driving experience is not much different and on the road this car because it has a, a longer wheelbase it actually feels pretty good in turns uh, when you apply the power you can feel the the rear end uh, help you out and uh, and also because right now it's very much underpowered compared to a GTI or a Golf R you can just drive it with your foot much closer to the floor uh, compared to those guys more of the time uh, of course we're gonna change that on the car but 
but but it's kind of fun to just just put your foot down and uh, you know you don't have you don't you don't go that fast you just enjoy having your your foot down uh, another cool feature is that it actually comes with launch control already built in uh, into the ECU and TCU tune so you can launch your all track uh, and that's going to come in handy uh, once of course we add power all right so the Cobb access port, AccuTech, other tuning solutions like Euro 9 allow you to flash the ECU and TCU of these cars. And what they allow you to do is improve the performance of the car, uh, adjust the transmission shift points in the case of the TCU, increase torque holding capacity, boost, what have you. Those are all really excellent things to do. However, there are settings on these cars that you may want to adjust that are outside of the scope of what these pure tuning tools can do. And this is uh, something where VCDS by Rostec uh, or OBD11 uh, can help you out. So this is an excellent tool. We've been using it on pretty much everything Audi and Volkswagen. And what it does is that it allows you to not just scan the car, and I mean not just the ECU and TCU, but you can scan every module on the car. That includes the radio, the windows, the body control module. Everything can be scanned and you can do what's called coding. So with coding, you can adjust things like how the lights come on, how the wipers come on, how, you know, whether the gauge sweeps back and forth when you first uh, get in the car. Uh, but what, what the focus here is, is to actually adjust some performance parameters. And one of them, is that the all track and the GTI, they don't allow you to take the traction and stability control fully off. Now, if you're going to be ice racing the car, if you're going to be on track at all, those nannies are certainly going to get in the way. So useful for street driving, on track, not so great. So we're gonna use this tool uh, to plug into the car and see if we can adjust some of those settings. All right, so one of the things that, that we all love is a good gauge sweep, you know? There's nothing like a good gauge sweep to get you up in the morning and ready for some performance driving. So, the way it usually works is that you hit your start stop button and when the car goes into this mode, you're gonna see your tachometer and speedometer sweep forwards and backwards and come right back. As you can see, this car does not do this, um, you know, from the get-go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna search online, in this case, uh, VW Vortex, uh, gauge sweep coding, and uh, it looks like we can just do it right here. So we've connected to the VCDS uh, dongle, the OBD dongle, we've plugged it in, we plug this into the laptop, and we're just gonna go and select the module that we want to program. Coding accepted, go okay. And now, check this out. Ooh, yeah, now that's sporty. All right, so now the other one, that's a little bit uh, that I've always wanted to do on this car. So if you go here under the car setup, under settings, you can see that the ESC system is activated, anti-skip regulation off, and ESC sport. This is the sportiest setting that, that you can have. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna have an option for ESC off, okay? So for that, I found another resource here. It looks like we gotta go to the ABS module, and then we go 29 for the bite. So we're gonna try first A5. We're gonna go do it. Coding accepted. So we're gonna go out, back in, and we have activated ASR off and turning to be control off remotely is not recommended. Are you sure? Yes. There you go. Stability control is now off. So you can see the, the kind of power that you get through this coding that you can, you can uh, affect a whole bunch of the functions. Of course, be smart about it. Um, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't screw up your car and, and make sure you know what you're changing. But other than that, this is a great tool to enhance some of the capabilities of your Volkswagen. So, 
We've had the opportunity to get some proper miles on our Bark 7 all track here and seven and a half I guess all track and uh, we've done development on DSG tune which has been a lot of drivability testing and making sure that drive sport and uh, manual modes work as expected and the transmission drives smoothly yet engages uh, very positively but along with that we've started our development of the engine tuning the ECU tuning so we're about to throw this car on the dyno and, and see how far we can go with different fuel types. But before doing that, what I've noticed is that we're starting to get some misfires at times. And misfires are a common theme in turbocharged four-cylinder engines, six-cylinder engines, what have you. What we're doing is, when raising boost, is that we're increasing cylinder pressure, and by increasing cylinder pressure, uh, you're going to have the possibility to blow out the spark plug. It's one of the main reasons that you're gonna get um, a, a misfire is that your, your spark is being blown out before it gets to ignite the mixture positively and or you have too weak of a coil pack. Now the former spark plugs are much more common than the latter although on Volkswagen especially as they get old the coil packs should also be replaced. So our favorite spark plug that we use in these engines the two liters as well is these brisk silver um, ER12s racing plugs. Now what you'll notice about these plugs is that they are quite recessed compared to stock. I'm going to pull out the stock ones and you'll see the difference in just a second. But the porcelain is quite recessed which means that they are going to be much less likely uh, to pre-ignite which is also a concern. Uh, low speed pre-ignition is an issue with direct injection engines. Uh, you'll notice that they have quite a bit of material on the ground strap, strap which is what wears out on plugs and they'll come pre-gapped to about 0 0.025, 0 0.026 inches, which is actually a good place to start, especially on cars that are making you know less than 30 psi of boost. So this plug out of the box um, is is a resilient plug. The other thing that happens on the Mark 7 specific engines is that whenever there's knock and detonation the combustion chamber seems to focus a lot of that energy into the porcelain into the center of the plug and I've seen uh, Denso's I've seen NGK's that crack this porcelain now when the porcelain cracks uh, these pieces fall inside the combustion chamber and they rattle around in there and they can do damage so what you want is uh, specifically on these cars a spark plug that is resilient and it's less likely or less prone to having the porcelain crack. You want to avoid knock, of course, through tuning and through high octane fuel, but knock can happen at times, and specifically on these engines, uh, breaking porcelains seems to be a common theme. So let's pull out the OEM plugs and, and put these in and just avoid any sort of the misfire um, situations and pre-ignition as well as porcelain breaking as we strap the car on the dyno and extract some more performance. So notice just how much more recessed the, uh, the electrode is and notice how much more recessed the porcelain is. It's only one step colder that we're going here, but the, the, recess, the recession is actually quite, quite pronounced. You probably don't want to go two steps colder unless you're running very high boost race car sort of situation because two steps colder is going to be harder to light, it's going to give starting problems and perhaps misfire simply because it's too cold of a plug. You can also see on this OEM plug that the coloration is actually beautiful. This shows for a very, very clean burn. There's not much wear on the plug. We're just going with a tightly, more tightly gapped um, one step colder plug for engine protection and to prevent uh, from future misfires but otherwise the first plug at least that we pulled out of this motor looks very very nice and clean time to actually pull out the last plug and there it is also looking very good good coloration throughout no damage no cracking nothing so that's very good to see. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, hey, maybe I should put the spark plugs back in. But while you're kind of in there, if you want to find out the compression of your motor, the actual compression of your motor, 
this is a good time to do it. So you can get yourself a, a compression tester that looks something like this. And um, this, uh, there's a variety of, of adapters, effectively. So what you want to do is you want to thread it into the spark plug hole. When you're going to be testing compression, you're going to depress the accelerator fully and you're going to first crank, let's say, 10 times, check the gauge, see where it is at 10 times, then crank another five and see if the gauge moves at all. We've got of 180 PSI on, uh, on cylinder number one. What you're looking for is not so much absolute numbers, what you're looking for is very much uh, repeatability across the board because the length of this hose on different tester will actually determine your absolute uh, compression numbers because you're also compressing the air inside the hose. So we've got 180, 180, looking good so far. Cylinder three, 180 on the dot. Excellent. So far, all these cylinders are really, really even, which is what I want to see and that's what I was expecting to see on a car that's really been lightly driven. All right, cylinder four is 180. So all the cylinders on this particular motor are showing 180 PSI across the board. Super happy, there's basically no deviation between them. And now that I've done this quick little test, and you can do, if you get yourself a little compression tester, you can do a test like this, you know, every time you do your spark plugs. And uh, on a car like this, you probably be changing them if driven hard, maybe 15, maybe 20,000 miles. So maybe 30 or so thousand kilometers um, that you want to be looking at them. So 25, 30,000 kilometers, especially if you start to get any sort of misfires. So without further ado, time to drop in the new plugs. Whenever you put in new spark plugs, it's good to, to gap them down. Like, like I said, these brisks come gap down to 0 .02, 0 0.026, which is 0.65 millimeters. So if you look here with a feeler gauge, we're just right there, straight out of the box. If you buy a set of NGKs uh, or uh, something different, Densos, I, I recommend NGKs over Densos in terms of resilience. But anyways, they may not come to that to that uh, correct gapping out of the box and you want to gap them. So the OEM plug is actually gapped a little bit larger than this. So you can see that I can easily fit this feeler gauge in there. So let's just see kind of where we're at in terms of the OEM plug gap. So let's see if 0 0.028, now it's bigger than that. So the OEM plug is 0 0.03, is uh, 0.75 millimeter. Is the, is the OEM gap, which is not terrible, uh, but you do want a little bit tighter for a high performance uh, tune running more boost. You don't want to go very tight when you when you put in plugs. I'm not sure exactly on this particular vehicle, but on most vehicles, you're you're looking at somewhere between 17 and 20 low 20 foot pounds. So last but not least, when you tighten these uh, ground straps, this is where they're most likely to break. So grab a hold, the actual end of this butt kind of uh, ring terminal when you're tightening it down and make sure it doesn't twist when and rip off the wire when you're tightening these down because they have a tendency to twist as the bolt catches them. So it's a good idea to test that everything is working as it should be.
nice and smooth. So now that we've got our colder uh, spark plugs in, it's time to put on the engine cover and put the car on the dyno. Let's see what we can make for power.